the final scenario a firm could find itself in the short run is going to be with some type of losses. So here, in order to find the losses, we go ahead and follow the same five-step pattern for maximizing profits. And this is going to be the more complex case because we see that there's going to be an additional scenario that we need to talk about. So starting off the same five-step pattern for maximizing profits, find MR equals to MC. That's step number one, the intersection right here. Step number two is to go ahead and find the Q star. Go straight down to the quantity axis, or Q star is equal to 35. Step number three is to find the P star, our profit maximizing price. It's equal to $70 right here. Step number four is to find the ATC. And what do we notice here? Our ATC is going to be higher than the price. So we go find the ATC curve, we hit it, and we notice that the ATC at the profit maximizing sort of intersection is going to be $80. So for every unit that we sell, it costs us $80, but we're only receiving $70. So every unit that we sell, we're losing out on $10. And then step number five is to take these numbers that we have right here, insert them into our profit equation, and that's exactly how much profits we have here. In this case, it's going to be losses. So profit, price minus ATC, the price is $70, the ATC is equal to $80, the Q star is equal to 35, so therefore, negative 10 times 35 will give us a negative profits of $350. So losses of $350 in this instance. So this is going to be scenario number three that the firm finds itself in where it's operating with some type of loss. So price less than ATC, we immediately notice that the, pro the firm is going to be earning losses. However, when the firm is earning losses, there is an extra decision that they are going to have to make for themselves. And the question that they have to ask themselves is, is it better for me to continue on with these losses or would I do better for myself to entirely shut down my entire firm? So that's the big question that we want to ask in this case. So would this firm want to stay in business? Would this firm, that with the example that we saw on the slide, would this firm want to stay in business? Firm want to stay in business or shut down or shut down so a decision that the firm has to make for itself does it want to stay in business with these losses or does it want to go ahead and shut down which they will still have some type of losses as well remember the assumption that we built up in the short run that firms cannot leave the industry in the short run so remember that firms cannot leave the industry in the short run. Cannot leave the industry, industry in the short run. So in order to answer this question, so go ahead and think about what the firm would want to do in the scenario. It's going to encounter a loss no matter what, but which one of these choices would be minimizing their losses by staying in business, continuing to operate, or just to go ahead and completely shut down? So take a look at the graph once again. What's going to be the best decision for the firm, do you think? The firm in this particular scenario would want to go ahead and continue to open and continue its operations, even though it's going to have losses, because its losses are going to be much lower compared to if it actually did shut down. And why is that going to be the case? Remember that there's going to be some type of fixed cost presence within the firm itself. With this firm right here, with the price of $70, you notice that it's greater than the average variable cost. The firm is still going to be able to pay all of its variable costs. It's able to pay its workers. It's able to pay for its utilities, all of its raw materials. The losses are essentially stemming from the fixed cost, meaning that it's not going to be able to pay all of its fixed costs. So therefore, in this case, because the firm can continue to open and pay for all the variable costs, it's going to do better to actually go ahead and continue to operate. If the firm actually went ahead and shut down, the firm would be encountering losses equal to its fixed cost, and in this case, that would be larger in this particular example. Remember that the difference between the ATC and the ABC lines is equal to the average fixed cost, and that distance is larger than the losses than what we see in this example. So what we have right here for this uh, for this slide, for the graphs that you just saw, we notice that the firm is going to want to continue to operate with these losses. So the firm will want to continue, will want to continue to open, continue to open and operate even though it has losses and operate, operate even though it 
has losses. And that is essentially saying that, hey, we have some type of fixed cost presence. Don't forget about these fixed costs. Even though we don't graph the fixed cost line within our cost curves right here, it is still going to be inherent. So fixed cost presence. So here, whenever a firm is going to be earning some type of losses, we need to go ahead and see exactly where the price is going to lie in terms of the average variable cost. So here, take a look at this particular scenario. If the price is going to be above the average variable cost, then that's exactly where the firm is going to do better to go ahead and operate, continue on with its business with losses. If the price ever falls below the average variable cost, it's no longer able to pay for its workers. It's no longer able to pay for the utilities to keep the lights on. So therefore, it would go ahead and do better to just go ahead and shut down and the losses would just extend to the fixed cost in that particular scenario. So here we see two different types of cases. If price is greater than AVC, the firm should operate with losses. So operate with losses. However, if we have the second scenario where price is less than AVC, price is less than AVC, the firm should shut down, shut down with losses once again. And this is essentially going to help minimize the losses for these particular firms, essentially because we do notice that, hey, the firm is going to be earning losses, but we want to get these losses as low as possible. So take a look at this particular example that we have right here. And that's going to lead us to something known as the shutdown points. So the shutdown point is essentially going to be the minimum of our average variable cost curve here. So at this point, the firm is essentially going to be indifferent between shutting down and continuing to operate because the losses in both of these scenarios will be exactly equal to one another. The price is equal to 65. The average total cost is equal to 80. So we do know for sure it's going to be encountering the third case with losses, but it's exactly able to cover the minimum of the average variable cost. So they're sort of indifferent between these shutdown points. However, this does lead us to the shutdown conditions of seeing exactly what the firm should be doing. And that's exactly what we described here with the price being greater than AVC or the price being less than AVC. So let's go ahead and write the shutdown points down a little bit more formally. So here, take a look at the shutdown points. So here, let me spell that better with the shutdown points, shut down points. And the shutdown points just tell us that in these particular scenarios, the firm knows exactly what to do. So when price in the short run, when price in the short run, remember this is gonna be the third short run scenario that we find ourselves in, when it falls below the minimum, on the minimum point on the ABC, minimum point on the AVC curve, AVC curve, the firm will minimize losses, the firm will minimize losses, minimize losses, and minimizing losses essentially means the same thing as maximizing your profits uh, for some strange reason. The firm will minimize losses by closing its doors, by closing its doors, and stopping production, and stopping production, production. And that leads us into the idea of the shutdown points or the shutdown condition. So we can actually make this graph a little bit more extreme to show why it's gonna be better for the firm to shut down in this particular case where pri when prices are gonna be below AVC. So let's go ahead and build up a extreme graph in this case. So here, let's go ahead and use a new color. Let's use this light blue and take a look at this extreme case. Suppose that we have the typical ATC, we have AVC, so ATC, AVC, and then suppose that our marginal revenue is all the way down here, marginal revenue. And then our marginal cost curve is say something like this. So marginal cost. So we have cost and then we have output on these axes. So using the same five-step pattern for maximizing profits, we can go ahead and see exactly why it's gonna be in the best interest to go ahead and shut down in this case. So let's use this orange line right here. So five-step pattern for maximizing profits. Step number one, find MR equal to MC. It's gonna be this intersection right here. We notice that, hey, this is the intersection point. This is always gonna be our starting point. So we are always gonna be at that intersection. Step number two is to find Q star. We go straight down. This is our Q star. 
Step number three is to find eight is to find the price. It's going to be P star in this instance. Remember that we can always read price off of the demand curve in under perfect competition. That's going to be right there. Step number four is to go ahead and find the ATC. Our ATC is all the way up here. So here, step number four, find ATC. And that is going to be our ATC. Notice that because price is less than ATC, we immediately are going to be under losses. Because we are under losses, the firm has a decision to make for itself. Does it want to go ahead and continue on with losses, continue to operate, or does it want to go ahead and shut down? If the firm went ahead and continued on with its operations, if it did not shut down, it would actually have very big losses. Essentially, remember, price minus ATC, which is going to be this area right here, we notice that the losses are going to be this entire big rectangle. Very, very big losses. So that's going to be the loss if the firm did not shut down. Loss if firm did not shut down. Not shut down. And that's just following the price minus ATC times quantity equation. Can the firm do better in this scenario? And the answer is going to be yes, because it's going to go ahead and notice that the price is less than the average variable cost. So therefore, the losses would be minimized if it actually went ahead and shut down. And the losses would be extended just to its fixed cost, which is just a difference between the ATC and the AVC lines. And if we wanted to graph that out, it would be this green rectangle that we have the horizontal lines for. So here, that would be the area for the losses if the firm shut down there. So here... Let me draw that a little bit better. We notice that the losses for the firm are just going to extend to this smaller rectangle right here. And the smaller the loss, the happier the firm is going to be. So loss if firm shuts down. Shuts down. So therefore, the firm has to choose for itself. What would be better, a big loss or a small loss? And the answer is always going to be a small loss in the scenario. So by taking a look at the more extreme version that we have with these shutdown points, we see them coming to fruition right here. Because price is below ATC, we know that we're going to be earning some type of loss. So that means we have to check our shutdown points. If price is less than AVC, then the firm is going to want to go ahead and shut down and the losses will be extended to its fixed cost. If the firm notices that price is above ABC, it's, one going, to go, it's going to go, want to go ahead and continue to operate with the losses. Here we notice that the firm operated when the price is below ATC or ABC, the losses would be very, very huge. So it would be best to go ahead and shut down instead. And this is actually a pretty applicable to things that we've seen in the past, especially with the sort of COVID-19 sort of shutdowns with the small businesses and the economy as a whole. The firms have to make a decision for themselves. Do they want to continue to operate their businesses? If they do so, they're going to have to pay their workers, pay for raw materials, pay for the utilities, and so on. And that would extend their losses very, very hugely. In many scenarios, FERC would actually go ahead and want to go ahead and shut down because their losses would just be extended to the fixed cost. So that's a decision that firms are going to have to make for themselves, and that's where the shutdown points and shutdown conditions do come into play and are very, very relevant. So with all of this, we know that firms are going to be minimizing their losses depending on the shutdown points. Anytime price is less than ATC, the firm is going to be immediately be brought with some type of loss, and they are going to be minimizing these losses by producing in the short run if price is greater than ABC, or it can go ahead and shut down if price is less than ABC. So once again, a decision that the firm has to make it for itself, the extra decision that a firm has to make for itself when the firm is earning losses is to go ahead and take a look at where price is in relation to the average variable cost. If it's greater than ABC, go ahead and continue to operate as normal. If it's less than ABC, go ahead and shut down. So three scenarios that we've seen so far that a firm can find itself in the short run, it can be operating with some type of profits, it can be operating with some type of normal profits or zero economic profits, and as we've just seen, the firm can be earning with some type of losses. So three scenarios, work with them and get a lot of practice with them.